So, this one's gonna be again about Getting to Yes by Robert Fisher. And yeah, there's gonna be more of the, the intro, as always. As every day, you know? And afterwards, I am uh, gonna work out. And I really am looking forward to that. Because because I've always been trying to just twitch around my diet a little tiny bit. Getting more into this, just uh, more protein and, and less carbs. Because my nutrition was actually like, I would even say 70% carbs. You know, and the rest is fat and it's just like really, really, really not such a lot of protein. The only protein that I got was from lentils that I've eaten quite a lot. But also... Uh, the oats but it's not that much though you know on the flip side well anyway you know it's it's not about nutrition today but it is about this one you know and i'm also gonna make it bigger so that we see the shit and also that i see the shit so we started with or with uh with finished with identify shared interests so and there's some other points which are shared interests are latent in every negotiation then, shared interests are opportunities, not godsends. You have to make something out of them. And stressing your shared interests can make the negotiation smoother and more amicable. And amicable because I don't fucking know what it means. means good-natured, cordial, civil, cautious, or courteous, polite, easygoing, and all that stuff. Do dovetail differing interests. Different beliefs, question mark, different values placed on time, question mark, different forecasts, differences in aversion to risk. Look for items that are low cost to you and high benefit to them and vice versa. Which makes sense, which really makes a lot of sense because you can be like, well, I can give you this and that. And if you know, and this is once again about empathy, if you know that this person wants to have that and if it is something that's quite important to this person, then you can just give it to the person, you know, and you can make something happen that's amazing for you, might be a, a higher price, might be whatever, or the same price, you know, or well, yeah, well, actually a higher price then, but they also get what they want to have, you know, and what's important for them. Invent ways of making their decisions easy. It is usually easier to refrain from doing something not being done than to stop action already on the way. It is easier to create something to cease doing something than to, under to undertake an entirely new course of action. Few things facilitate a decision as much as precedent, which means uh, exemplar, model, pattern, and whatnot. Criteria. Insist that the result be based on some objective standard. Yes, you know, I think having a standard just makes sense, you know, because then without a standard i guess like the conversation could be about everything and everything could be valued you know and then like yeah having standards is good in general i would kind of say deciding on a basis of will is costly yes <laughs> it really is kind of use objective criteria and stats and principled negotiation produces wise agreements amicable or amicable and efficiently principled negotiation you know i would say this as well like i mean if you're having a business if you're having an agency primarily you can't be like well i'm gonna make it for this person for that price and that person for that price just because you you want to but having a basis and having like a structure and then having like just i think also having rules and also having well i i, I do not like standards but i i would rather say rules kind of that for some people it's going to be this price and for some other people it's going to be that price. I think it is not necessarily like something different. You're not necessarily going to price people differently, but it is going to be way more of an easy decision for you because you know, okay, this person with such a lot of employees and this revenue and this profit and that and that and that has to pay this and that. But if this person comes to me and is like, well, uh, my revenue is at a minus, uh, my profit is just in a double minus. I really am fucked, but I need this. And you feel like, well, you you want to do this project and you can make it for the price and shit. Then you can, you know, without maybe also feeling bad and without feeling like, maybe also without feeling like 
a piece of shit because you're pricing some things really, really, really high. Maybe as well. Develop objective criteria. Develop fair standards for evaluation and use fair procedures to resolving the conflicting interests. Makes sense. Negotiating with objective criteria. Frame each issue as a search for objective criteria. Ask for the theory behind positions. How did you arrive at the price? How did you arrive? Like, and people are going to then be like, well, I thought about it. <laughs> I guess. Or, well, you know, my mother said it, it would be a great price. Agree on principles first. Reason and be open to reason as to which standards are most appropriate and how they should be applied. Never yield to pressure, only to principle. Pressure is a piece of shit. Like it really is. And I think especially when it is about some some fucked up negotiation stuff. Um, yeah. 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 And you shouldn't really kind of feel under pressure, I guess. But I mean, like for the person that's, that's selling, I always think about selling and buying some shit, like a car or something else that you really have to negotiate about. And or maybe, is it hurdle about? Hiddle? Huddle? Huddle? Whatever it is. Best alternative to negotiation agreement. The cost of using a bottom line. It keeps you from being more inventive with solutions and it can sometimes prevent you from making an advantageous decision. What what the fuck did I think about? <laughs> oh my fucking god. This has been really strange right now. Because I thought about something completely different. I thought about a project that I'm working on besides call for... Or where I'm just... <laughs> fucking hell. Um, this is like a problem when I just speak with myself in English in my, <laughs> in my leisure time as well. It gets kind of fucked up then. Um, I hope I'm gonna cut it out. I'm... I have to write it down 818. I hopefully I'm going to remember that. <laughs> well, it is funny anyway. So if you can't sell your house, will you rent it? Question mark. Tear it down and sell the lot. Keep it on the market indefinitely. Know your B-A-N-T-N-A. B-A-N-T-N-A. What, what, what does it mean? Best alternative to negotiation agreement. Well, yeah, okay. I mean, it's, it's not a good thing. I just f still find it crazy that I thought about something completely different and that I've always been talking about it i guess at least i'm actually not quite sure well yeah anyway formulate a trip why to activate your b-a-n-t-n-a oh b-a-t-n-a and a i'm sorry develop your b-a-t-n-a and then a list of actions you might take if no agreement is reached improve some of the more promising ideas and convert them into practical alternatives select uh ten tentatively 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 the project is tentatively scheduled for next year. Unions tentatively agreed to a uh, three-year whatever. What is it? Oh, I see. The one idea that seems best. And I always consider the other sites. B-A-N. B-A-T-N-A. I think... <sighs> Jiu-Jitsu. Negotiation Jiu-Jitsu. What is it going to be about Jiu-Jitsu? Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> what I thought about, and I think it is something that's quite interesting, quite also valuable, or can be quite valuable as well, if you think about it, um, is it good to have a backup plan? Because this obviously is a backup plan. Having the best alternative to negotiation or negotiated agreement is going to be like a thing for you to be okay how it is, I guess, in the end. Or something. Quite. Uh, the thing is like... <sighs> People like Arnold Schwarzenegger or Arnold Schwarzenegger, however you want to pronounce him, I don't give a fuck, say that you should not have a plan B because it distracts from plan A. It might also have been Phil, uh, Will Smith that said that, but not quite sure. But on the flip side, I also think that just having a plan B just really makes sense because if you uh, think about it, I mean, like, if you're having a plan B, like, if there's, like, a backup plan, this is what I think about. And now, by the way, um, I don't know if you know that, but sometimes you see musicians having one ear closed and the other open, and they're singing in that way. I do assume they're having a playback of themselves in their ear, so that they're hearing themselves sing, I guess. Um... 
might also be because they can't actually hear themselves sing because music is so loud. Could this be a case? I don't know. But what I'm seeing right now, what I'm feeling right now is that there's... Uh, it is completely different if I'm just talking that way and or if I'm just having one ear shut. And I also feel like that having one ear shut is a little tiny bit more like on ease, I guess, or something. And I can control my voice in a, a little bit of a different way, I'd say. I don't know. Like it's different than like this. But yeah, so I don't know if you should have a backup plan or not. Um, there is definitely upsides and there's also definitely downsides. Yeah. Negotiation jujitsu for when they won't play. How to prevent the cycle of action and reaction, don't push back. Well, let's just do 550. No, this is too expensive. Uh, this is what I'm thinking about. Like, just going back and forth and back and forth. And it's bullshit. Avoid pitting your strength against them directly. Instead, use your skill to step aside and turn their strengths to your ends. I mean, yeah, this is just said quite easily, I guess. But uh, let's do it. Why don't? Something else. Do not attack their position, look behind it. Assume every position is a general attempt to address the basic concerns of both sides. Seek out and discuss the principles underlying their position. Discuss what would happen if one of their positions were accepted. Sometimes framing it in this way can show its weaknesses. Weaknesses. You know? Don't defend your ideas, invite criticism and advice. Ask them what's wrong with your idea, ask for their advice and what they would do in your situation. This could be like a really good trick, like being, I mean, I just still have to think about like selling something and we are by the way going to finish up with this one today. Um, you could easily be like, okay, uh, you're selling a car and you would be like, well, what would I, what would you sell this car for? And this person, like this person has to think about your position and the position that you're in, which maybe makes the person a little bit more empathetic with you and with your position and with your price as well. But I mean, on the other hand, the, the person could also be like, well, I would just sell it for 10 bucks because it's a piece of shit. But that's not really honest, probably. Like, maybe it is, but probably not. So I think it is actually a good thing. I think it is actually a really kind of good tactic, as far as I'm seeing it here, I guess. And ask for the... Oh, I've, I've read that. Recast an attack on you as an attack on the problem. If they attack you personally, resist the temptation to defend yourself or to attack back, let them let off steam. Well, yeah, you know, maybe they then feel even bad for it and they think, well, you know, let's settle with this higher price, you know, because I've been a fucking dick, you know, and therefore it is also fine. And okay, ask questions and pause, use questions instead of statements. Uh, I think this is a good one, right? You know what, let's just do it. I think it's fair, right? No, no, let's just do it in this way, right? It's 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 fine. Yes. <laughs> what if they use dirty tricks, which is the last one? And I do before I'm finishing up with this one, something that I feel really sad about is that that I didn't get that I didn't get too much about it. Like there's so much value, I guess, but I didn't get too much of it. Maybe because I wasn't able to think about it properly, because I'm going through it, and which leaves me with okay, I'm willing to read it correctly but well yeah anyway what if they use dirty tricks deliberate deception phony facts make the negotiation proceed independent of trust trust verify factual assertions as you go i mean you have to trust the other person ambitious authority ask just how much authority they have on this matter or meta dubious intentions pretending to be in support of one thing to convince you of another. Okay. Psychological warfare. Stressful situations. If you find a situation prejudicial, say so and try to change it. I feel stressed. Well, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Something that happened to me as well, actually, kind of. You know, when, when people try to be too fast, maybe, and too whatever. Personal attacks. If you're... Being personally attacked, bring it up explicitly. Well, let's just remain, uh, re remember that it is not about me and is also not about you, but it's about the fucking problems we're having. Good guy versus bad guy routine. Threats. Good negotiations do not resort to threats. Warnings are much more leg leg legitimate. 
so long as they are backed by the reality of the situation. Positional pressure tactics, yes, there it is. Refusal to negotiate. Recognize that this is a possible ploy to get some concession from you. Talk about their refusal to negotiate. Why do they not want to? Insist on using principles. I think this is actually always a good one. Like, why do you not want to negotiate with me? You know, why don't... Warum wollen sie nicht mit mir handeln? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, not really, kind of. Somehow. Um, I think it is a good question. Because they then maybe have to... Well, if, if they're then going to be like, well, I don't want to talk about it. Like, yeah. Then it's probably going to be like, okay, I'm not going to sell this to that person. Like, it's going to be it. Probably. Like, why do not want to go just lower on the price? You know, is there, is there something going on? Like, just whatever. And then this person might... Be, well, it could also backfire. You know, if this person then is like, okay, it's been like the favorite necklace of my mother or my grandmother that died like a year ago, then, um, I mean, like, then I think the, the person that... The person that, 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 that is selling it or the person that's buying it is probably then going to be like, well, you know what, I'm going to buy it for that price, you know, maybe. Extreme demands, ask for principled justification of that stance to show them how ridiculous it is. <laughs> well, escalating demands, call it to their attention, stop negotiations for a bit, insist on principles to make it more serious. Lock-in tactic, one side entirely looks, locks in that position, ignore the lock Ignore the lock-in, talk about the principles and let them back down and save face. And the last one is take it or leave it, which is, I think, a relatively common one. Ignore it and then draw attention to it as a problem. Well, I do just think, like, could he say, like, well, you know, I'm not going to leave it unless you're going to give me a good price or something? Like, I don't know. And the last one is don't be a victim. As I said, I think it is a really good one and this is actually the end of it and I... I also have to say, like, it is a relatively long one as well. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm able to find another one. I'm not too happy about how I went through this one. I'm not too happy about how it also turned out. In terms of, like, I, I do just really hope that you're getting something out of it. You know, if it is the case, then I don't give a fuck about if... Then I really don't give a fuck about whether I've understood anything or not. I really don't, you know. But yeah, I think that this is going to be the end of the video here. And thank you very much. And also the talking part today, also in this episode as well as the other episodes, has been pretty fucking good and I appreciate that. But I also appreciate your time spending with me here. And yeah, I wish you the best health of us and all success and also hope that you're going to remind yourself and you're going to be remembered, which basically means your legacy and basically means just being a nice person and then being remembered as a nice person. The three other questions that I'm having for you are... Why are you here? What are you trying to change? And what is bothering you the most? These three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea. But yeah, with that being said, hopefully we're going to see you the next time. So thank you a lot. I really, truly appreciate that. And I'll see you.